DNA, the Metaverse Dual Chain Network Architecture. Hi, I'm Alex Lightman, and welcome to the Lightman Report, enabled by Metaverse DNA. Our topic this week is self-sovereign identity. I hope you find it interesting. So we're going to talk about what it is, what it means, uh, identity management, long-term goals of this, verifiable credentials, decentralized identifiers, key industry initiative, and when uh, self-sovereign identity makes business sense. So the global identity verification market is growing fast. It was about $6 billion in 2019. And before the start of COVID-19, the size was expected to more than double to uh, $12.8 billion by 2024. And the factors influencing this are business, including the cases when it makes sense, which we'll deal with at the end, uh, the growth of the technology uh, and the user demand for it, uh, governance and government, all basically contributing towards this. So sovereign identity is the lifetime portable digital identity of any person, organization, or thing that does not depend on any centralized authority and can't be taken away by one of them. So it typically has uh, six factors. It's, it's an identity model in which any person, organization, or thing fully owns or controls their own data, and it's not governed by centralized authority, and it can't be removed by the identity owner. Identity owners have full control over the data they own, own your data. Integrity, security, and privacy of the owner's identity are ensured by the system. A central authority isn't required for trust. Identity owners can use their identity data in where they want, for instance, in accessing an online service. And any changes to the data is transparent, and the transparency is sustained by the system. Typically has six parts, an anchor, the authenticity, the agency, the boundary of the self, the sharing of the ZKP, the zero knowledge proof, and then the zero knowledge proof itself. So with the rise of blockchain, identity management systems are switching from traditional web-centric approach or identity federation towards self-sovereign identity paradigm. Self-sovereign identities allow citizens to take control of their data in any time and any online situation. And self-sovereign identity means the full user's control. It's possible to take decentralized identity a step further by giving users control, not just of their identifiers, but also of the data associated with them. That's at the heart of this. Uh, and you have this organizational identity management you see in the, uh, basically the, ah, I'm trying to get my fingers right. Yes, there. <laughs> okay, uh, the organizational identity management, you, me, Bob, Alice, others, and governments, surveillance capitalists, and others. So that's basically how it's set up today so that uh, Facebook can make $18.5 in profits and Google can make tens of million, billions of dollars in profits uh, from this and make trillion-dollar valued companies, $700 billion to a trillion-dollar valued companies, uh, based on taking this. Whereas with self-sovereign identity, you have you as the individual in charge. Uh, at Bob, Alice, and then you give the press certain things, your employer certain things, your health care, your grandmother, the police, uh, company X, uh, all these kind of, th basically, you give them uh, what information you want and you don't give them what you don't want. Okay, so also identity management methods have evolved over time according to how much privacy preservation they've had. So you have centralized identity management, you have federated, and by the way, you see the privacy is increasing over time. User-centric identity management, self-sovereign, and then self-sovereign with the blockchain. So that's the gold standard. Uh, benefits of cryptography. Blockchain provides an efficient implementation of public key cryptography and hashing that can be extended for digital identity ownership. And it helps ensure integrity and authenticity of identity-based records. You can use it for third-party attestation of records and it helps facilitating permission based on record sharing with smart contracts. So here's an example of what the uh, flow would be of a blockchain-based identity system that's going to banks and companies and governments, universities showing your credentials, nurses need credentials, military people need credentials, travelers need credentials, 
This is how it can all work on a blockchain. The long-term goals of self-sovereign identity are decentralization, eliminate the requirement for centralized authority or single points of failure in identifier management, give, uh, give control to both human and non-human entities, and give them the power to directly control their digital identifiers without the need to rely on external authorities who can basically just grab that and abuse their power and feed it into an ad tech monetizing machine. Uh, privacy, enable entities to control the disclosure of their information, including minimal, selective, and progressive sharing of attributes or other data. Security, enable sufficient assurance for relying parties to depend on DID documents for their required level of assurance. Proof base, enable the DID subject to provide cryptographic proof of identifier control and information veracity when interacting with other entities. Other long-term goals are discoverability, uh, our ambient findability, make it possible for entities to discover DIDs for other entities to learn more about or interact with them. Perhaps you want people to find you. Interoperability, use interoperability standards so DID infrastructure can make uh, use of existing tools and software libraries designed for interoperability. Portability, be system and network agnostic and independent and enable entities to use their digital identifiers with any system that supports DIDs and DID methods. Simplicity, favor a reduced set of simple features in order to make the technology easier to understand, implement, and deploy. And extensibility, when possible, enable extensibility, provided it doesn't hinder the interoperability, the portability, or the simplicity. Verifier, verifiable credentials are machine-readable, privacy-respecting, cryptographically secure, digital credentials of identity owners. Verifiable credentials support self-sovereign identity such that the identity owners accumulate credentials into an identity account and use the credentials to prove who they are. Verifiable credentials usually involves a third-party attestation, but it can be self-attested, and the attestation is done by exploiting the concept of digital signatures. The attester or issuer having a DID it creates a verifiable credential by signing the identity owner's records using its private key, and the credential is cryptographically verified by a verifier using the attester's public key. The verifiers count on the credibility of issuers to trust the credentials. So here's the decentralized identifier we've been talking about. The decentralized identifier, or DID, is an identification mechanism which assigns a standard cryptographically verifiable, globally unique, and permanent identity to individuals, organizations, and things, which is completely under the identity owner's control and doesn't depend on central authorities. Public key cryptography is used in DID, uh, as each DID contains an asymmetric key pair, a public and an associated private key. The control of a DID is managed through the control of DID's private key. And so these kind of things, there's a, a little diagram of the digitally enabled, uh, and basically DIDs enabled digitally signed verifiable claim. So you have an issuer who uh, issues the claim to a holder who presents the claim to a verifier. And you basically have the, uh, the DID underpinning that. And standard elements of a DID document are DID for self-description, decentralized identifier for self-description, a set of public keys for verification, a set of authentication methods for authentication, a set of service endpoints for interaction, a timestamp for audit history, and a signature for integrity. Those are the six elements. And there are key industry initiatives, including early ecosystems and consortiums that are valuable for helping this. So there's the Decentralized Identity Foundation, DIF, the Hyperledger Indy and the ARIES, and the Sovereign Foundation and the W3C. And then there, here are the cases when uh, basically self-sovereign identity makes business sense. Verifying assertions uh, is costly and important. Streamlining workflows, missing standardization of data and communication. Credentials are useful in other contexts. Personal data as liability and you, where you have a customer-driven workflow. So this has been my Lightman report on self-sovereign identity. I hope it's useful and I hope that you one day own all your data and that self-sovereign identity and what you learned here is part of that. Thank you and I'll see you next week.